The landmark Malampaya Deep Water Gas to Power Project is more than 85% complete as it continues to rapidly take shape in time for first gas delivery in October 2001. The economic and social significance of Malampaya will be considerable. It will provide over 30% of Luzon's energy requirements and significantly reduce the country's costs of importing hydrocarbon fuels. Shell Philippines Exploration BV, or SPEX, is responsible for the development and operation of the project's upstream component in partnership with Texaco Philippines and the Philippine National Oil Company Exploration Corporation. Following the many milestones achieved in 2000, SPEX greeted the new millennium with a successful installation of the first three Christmas trees on the sea floor. The trees will control the flow from the wells to the subsea manifold. On January 22, after pulling anchors from Batangas just a few days before, the Atwood Falcon drilling rig installed the first Christmas tree on well number 9 at a depth of 832 meters below sea level. Two more Christmas trees were installed on wells 5 and 6, with a third successfully completed on January 26. Using the rig anchors, the trees were carefully positioned over each well, lowered into place, and locked before being extensively tested to ensure all functions are operating. The Toys of Perseus completed the installation of the two main subsea umbilicals that control the manifold from the production platform and supply hydrate inhibition fluid to the wells. The installation of the two 30-kilometer flow lines that carry the gas from the manifold were completed in late January. One of the most challenging parts of the operation was the installation of the pipeline end structures, or PLES. Each flow line end was recovered from the seabed. The PLES lifted, joined with a flow line, and welded on a small platform over the side of the vessel. After welding and inspection, each entire assembly was lifted and lowered to its final position on the seabed, some 45 meters from the subsea manifold. During the period, the manifold was also successfully lowered to the seabed. Following its transport by barge, the manifold was lifted aboard pipelay vessel Solitaire and prepared for installation. The manifold was positioned on top of three seabed piles, drilled and grouted from the Atwood Falcon drilling rig last year. Other subsea work included measurements for the custom manufacture of flow line and well jumper spools. Also early in the year, the Calm Boy, a small yet significant part of the project fabricated in Batangas, was finally installed on location two and a half kilometers from the CGS. It will enable condensate retrieved from the platform to be shipped via tankers. The most exciting part of the project during the first quarter of 2001 was the loadout and installation of the topsides onto the CGS. Following the traditional Chinese blessing, the topsides was ready for the move. Loadout to the submersible barge began on February 16 with the aid of a sophisticated strand jacking system. This was the most critical phase of the topside's transport operation, requiring careful measurement, leveling, ballasting, and greasing of the skids to ensure smooth progress of the transport frame and its valuable cargo after 21 months of construction. As always, nothing was left to chance. Slowly, the top sides was moved from the construction wharf onto the barge. In the early hours of February 17, the loadout was completed and the top sides made ready for its 1,200 nautical mile journey to Palawan. In anticipation of my trip here, I reviewed a video that was recorded uh, when we had the plate cutting ceremony here back on the 27th of May 1999 with uh, Jan Veldwijk and Mr. Premraj. And I'd like to share with you some of the commitments that Mr. Premraj made on that day. And we can perhaps judge how well he did 
with respect to his ability to live up to the can-do, will-do, must-do logo. What he stated on that video was that he would exceed the HSE targets that he had committed to the clients and that the fact there's still a zero on that LTI board shows us that he scored 10 out of 10 on that particular objective. At dawn on the 1st of March, the barge with the topsides on board was quietly towed out of the harbor. At almost 100 meters in height with a towering flare boom, it dwarfed many ships as it made its way to the open sea. Three hours later, it crossed the vicinity of Changi Airport, which needed to adjust its flight schedules to make way for the passage of the Malampaya topsides. Ten days later, the topsides arrived in Palawan. Preparations were made for its eventual installation. As I understand it, this is the uh, biggest facility of its kind in Asia, and it certainly puts the Philippines in the uh, map of the uh, oil industry around the world. Carefully, the barge sailed in between the four legs of the CGS with the aid of ocean-going tugs positioned at each corner of the structure. Ballasting commenced, lowering the mounts into the CGS legs. Finally, at 4.17 on the afternoon of the 17th of March, the top sides were securely resting on the CGS. British companies already understand that there's a lot of good business that can be done in the Philippines, and I think this particular Malampire project is going to just add to that level of confidence. This is going to meet so much of the Philippines' energy needs. That's going to mean less uh, um, reliance on importing of oil, and it's going to mean good revenue flows for the government. So it is just the most important project the Philippines has ever had. The Malampaya project continues to set records for advanced engineering technology and construction. At around 11,500 tons, this is the heaviest top sites to be installed using the float over method and the biggest facility of its kind in Asia. It was installed safely, efficiently, on schedule and within budget. It's been a fantastic experience. I wouldn't have swapped it for anything else to see all these milestones achieved one after the other, the CGS installation, the drilling, this completion work, the top sides arriving here after that 2200 kilometer journey from Singapore. It's so inspiring for me as an engineer and I'm very, very satisfied. And I really take my hat off to all of the engineers, all of the staff and specs, all of the contractors, all of the subcontractors all around the world who have worked together with us to transform the vision of the Malampire project into reality. Absolutely fantastic. Wouldn't swap it for anything. At the onshore gas plant, around 85% of the project has been completed by the end of March, with all materials now on site. Piping systems have been installed, with testing underway. The electrical substation has also been energized, with loop checking ongoing in the control room. At the landfall site, another piece of outstanding engineering is being completed with a pre-commissioning spread. Massive compressors pumping out enormous volumes of dry air have been running almost continually since the end of January. At 6 a.m. on March 25, the required dew point was reached, allowing the platform and gas plant teams to perform the respective tie-ins. On Sunday, April 1, a continuous completed pipeline reached from the OGP plant all the way to the production platform in Palawan. Also during the period, a further record in lost time injury achievement was reached, a remarkable 8 million man hours. Throughout the entire project, the Malambaya partners have shown a strong commitment to sustainable development in action. Nowhere is this more evident than at the community adjacent to the former CGS construction site called Sitio Agusuhin, where the population has doubled to 700. A social development program implemented by Filipina Shell Foundation, together with SPECS, helped transform the lives of the people living in the village. Today, there is a new high school to provide education without the need to travel over the bay. At the Community Reforestation Project, designed in part to support the world's largest endangered fruit-eating bats, more trees have been planted. 
But the most exciting part of the program in this area is the Milkfish Aquaculture Project. Residents of the community were taught and trained in fisheries development and management. In mid-2000, 146,000 fingerlings were released and bred in the waters of Sitio Agusuhin. Harvest returns are now estimated at 29,000 kilograms, repaying the initial investment in just six months, and with less need to go to sea to fish. Sustainable development in action is also highly visible in Palawan, where the Adventist Hospital now has a new, fully equipped emergency wing. And at the Saka village, a range of activities for out-of-school students are teaching them many techniques to assist in horticulture, animal husbandry, and basic agribusiness. It is through initiatives like these, performed as part of SPEX's commitment to the Philippine community, that the Malampaya project provides much more than commercial benefits. Today, the Philippines is well on the way to the birth of its new natural gas industry. Not only are milestones, records, and achievements inspirational, they have been accomplished with Filipinos involved at every level, from senior and middle management to engineers and workers who have learned new skills. The world is changing, changing. With a world placing an increasing focus on clean and green energy, the Philippines is showing the way by harnessing resources from one of the world's most difficult locations deep beneath the ocean floor, creating a brighter, more rewarding future for generations to come. The world is changing, changing.